Learn the art of investing on MoneyWise. This is the Money Wise podcast. My name is Sheetal and today we're about to listen to wisdom and insights on the concept of small caps because uh, as we all know there is this always a sentiment a sinking feeling when you see a small cap really grow and become in this multi bagger and then we get the sneaking suspicion that oh we've not vested our money in that and that's just what you know the crux of the matter is and there are more questions obviously that are simmering in your head on the topic of small caps so i thought why not bring in Manish Gunbani who is heading the equity fund management for Bandhan Mutual Fund he brings himself with him in fact a wealth of expertise management expertise as well and has an excellent track record of wealth creation for investors he graduated from IIT Madras and has a post graduate diploma in management from IIM Bangalore welcome to the show and how are you doing today hi sheetal thanks a lot for having me on the show and i really i think pointed out to our listeners the crux of the matter right it's uh, it's a very common regret that i articulated sometime back when you see small caps grow and then after that you feel oh my god have i missed the bus on this one and that pain of a missed or what we perceive as a missed opportunity continues to haunt us even <laughs> as we are not <laughs> able to hit the iron on the head right these are the kind of uh, investor sentiments that i'm sure you encounter very often but for the better understanding of our listenership can you explain first up the small cap category Well see the thing is the small cap category if you see the technical or the more formal definition in the industry it is any stock which is beyond the top 250 by market cap broadly because the top 100 are called the large cap the 150 after the top 100 are called the mid cap and anything beyond that is the small cap so that's the more formal definition the way i think about it is i think the dna of investing in small caps is quite different from let's say large cap i think there is a triple r difference mm-hmm. um one is returns one is research and one is risk uh let me spend a couple of minutes on each of these so first is when you look at small caps when we invest there unlike the large caps the return thinking is a bit different in the sense that a lot of times with large caps you thinking of it versus the benchmark whereas when you investing in small caps uh, the element of absolute return is much higher mm-hmm. so so when you look at large caps you think is it going to be nifty 100 nifty 200 whatever but when we are investing in small caps we are trying to see if can it double in 3 4 years or 5 years or whatever rather than worrying about what is the benchmark is it there in the benchmark or not will it beat the benchmark so i think there is first of all a big difference in the way uh, you invest in large caps versus small caps the second is on the research side clearly what i believe is that when we research small caps our effort in understanding the business model and management has to be much more robust because first of all a lot of small caps are new to the market right so when you're looking at very established companies they've been listed for 20 30 50 years um so there is a fair amount of information available on the business model how has it behaved across cycles uh, what are the global peers and also the management is very well known because having been listed for so many years there is a lot of information how management has behaved over a long period of time but small caps a lot of times that kind of information is not there because they have been listed relatively recently the public information has not been as exhaustive as with large caps so essentially you need to do a lot more work to my mind in small caps to understand the business model and management okay and the other big difference is in lot of large and mid caps if you are an institutional investor you get a lot of support from the sell side right in in small caps a lot of times the sell side research is not there or it's very sparse so that important input is also very different mm. so that's the second r of research the third r is about risk now obviously small caps carry more risk on various dimensions one is of course just the fundamental dimension of this business model and management where you may go wrong in your research 
But there's also the element of liquidity that, again, as an institutional investor, when we buy small caps, these are fairly illiquid positions. So you can't change them overnight. So you can say that the cost of going wrong is much higher in small caps versus large and mid caps. So this triple R difference, returns, research and risk, to my mind, is very different for small caps versus the rest of the other categories. Well, thank you for doing that for us. It's really, very helpful. I don't think anyone is going to forget the three R's uh, that you've used to help us understand the small cap category. So that really brings me to this other question that uh, I think uh, I can hear a chorus of voices asking, Manish Gunwani, what's in it for me? <laughs> Basically, now is when we dive into the benefits of investing into the small cap category, Manish, do help us understand. So just by that triple R framework, if we can do the research right and have great risk management, I think the potential returns on offer in the small cap space are going to be very, very attractive. So if we just look at historical data, for example, in the last 10 years, the small cap category average return Versus the large cap category average return, the delta is about 6 to 7 percent. The small cap category has returned higher than large cap category. Now, obviously, history is no guide to the future. But the thing is, when you look at the wide variety of stocks available in the small cap space, the fact is there can only be 100 large cap only 150 mid cap, but the number of uh, small cap companies that are investable, which are growing well, which have reasonably good management teams in India is quite huge. And with that variety, which in, incidentally, obviously, is getting added to every year because you have IPOs every year. So the choice is becoming vaster and vaster. With that rich choice, I think if someone can execute a great research, great risk management, I think the potential returns on offer are going to be very, very attractive. Um, I also should mention that it may need patience and tolerance for volatility because small caps tend to be more volatile and sometimes there will be phases like 2009 to 13 where they may not do much. So you need a bit more patience. You need some attitude for tolerating volatility. But right. yes, if you are able to do that, I think there can be reasonably good returns on offer. And I think you've hit the nail on the target over here with respect to the returns provided, as you pointed out, the other two hours are taken care of. You're listening to MoneyWise, successful investment ideas that create wealth. Did you know The total assets under management of the Indian mutual fund industry stand at about Rs 46 lakh crore, which is around 15% of India's GDP. The world average is around 75%. Personal Finance Simplified, only on MoneyWise. Now, here's where I wish I had a crystal ball, but uh, I'm reminded of something, a phrase that you used some time back. You said, history cannot always be a guide to the future. And here when I'm talking about crystal ball and looking into the future. I realize that, oh my God, in matters of wealth and money, I don't think you can predict the future either. So let me yeah. keep the crystal ball aside and let me just rely on your expertise and experience over here. Investors would certainly like to hear about what lies ahead, according to you, in the small cap space. What can we look forward to? So I personally think even at a global level, the Indian small cap space is probably the most exciting segment of global capital markets. And the reason I think like that is basically that um, very simply, if you take all large economies, um, whether it's US, Europe, Japan, China, UK, Clearly, the highest nominal growth and real GDP growth for the next 10 years is likely to be in India, right? Obviously, our base is low. So, I think, let's say anywhere between 10 to 13% kind of nominal GDP growth is quite likely over the next 10 years. And that is fairly healthy growth by any measure. Now, what we've seen, if you do an analysis of last 100 years of returns across all major countries, is that, first of all, in majority of countries, small and mid-caps outperform. And that is especially true in 
phases when the nominal GDP growth of that country was high. So let's say Japan uh, from, let's say, 1950 to 1990 or U.S. from, let's say, 1900 to 1950. And there were phases where these countries did very well in terms of growth. And in those phases, typically mid and small caps do have a tendency to outperform and generate healthy returns. So I think the next 10 years is going to be very, very exciting for Indians, especially in the small cap space. So one is just the potential returns, but also I think that there are two factors which are very interesting that India generally, first of all, has a corporate sector, which is very high return on equity. So unlike some of these centralized countries like China, where the corporate sector ROE tends to be very low, in general, because India is capital scarce, the return on equity has to be high to attract capital. So the average return on equity in India is reasonably healthy. So that is one good thing as an investor that the return equity being high ensures that generally returns are good. And two is, I think there are obviously geopolitical things which are happening, which seem to present a great positive if some of the big areas where India was relatively weak, like manufacturing, tourism. I think the thing about small caps is when new areas emerge in the economy, they get first captured in the small cap space, right? right. Um, so if you're going to see, you know, things like this, China plus one keep developing in new segments of manufacturing. If you're going to see India do some high tech stuff in AI or chip manufacturing, um, I have a feeling that the plays on these kind of trends typically will manifest themselves more in small caps than large caps because these companies have to be new, right? Right. So overall, I think it's going to be a very exciting decade for Indian small caps. And when you mentioned geopolitical, you know, situations and trends pointing in that particular direction, I was saying all our listeners are going to say, oh, my God, I have to start reading the newspaper uh, line to you know start to finish now to keep myself abreast of what is going on in the world around me. Otherwise, this is not not a thing for me. And that's really my next question. Right. A lot of people feel they don't have the time or the knowledge to explore areas like the one that we're talking about and that they feel they need professional guidance. We're all looking for this hero who will come and save us from this lack of information. <laughs> Over here. You know, is there, a, is there a hero sort of a thing that I can look to, a well curated package maybe of the small cap space uh, or emerging businesses where I just want to, you know, park my money and put my worries to rest because I know a professional fund manager is taking care of that uh, anchor or the person who's navigating me through these times. Um, I've also heard about Bandhan Emerging Businesses Fund. So it would be great to understand a little bit about a fund like this one and what really makes it a good option for investors to consider. So again, we are on this uh, triple R thing. So clearly, I think a good fund needs to have a great research behind it and great risk management, great risk management behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think we have built a great research team. Uh, we have put in place a lot of processes around risk management. And so specifically for the fund, for example, I think. At the portfolio level, see, one is at the research level, um, which, as I said, we think that the research team is superb and should keep generating great ideas. But at the portfolio level also, I think risk management is important. Um, so we are doing two important things there. Um, so while we are not benchmark oriented in picking stocks, but we ensure that at a sectoral level or at a macro level or at a style level, uh, we are not skewed in one direction. So let's say at a style level, it's not that we have only value stocks or only growth stocks or only thematic stocks. We have a mix of everything. At a sectoral level, whether it's financials or industrials or chemicals or, or any big segment, uh, we are there. It's not that we are ignoring, uh, you know, large sector weights and taking risk that because see sometimes due to macro conditions, even if you think that a sector is not going to do well, it may start doing well. So let's say there's an export sector, you think stocks are fully valued. 
but currency goes to 90 rupees or you know, on the other side it goes to 75 so you don't want to take macro bets by choosing to remain confined to few sectors we believe that we should have presence across all sectors so that's the first thing we're doing at the portfolio level the second is about liquidity as i said a large part of the risk around small caps is liquidity so at the portfolio level again we are making sure that we run a very fragmented portfolio we have 100 plus stocks because we believe that in small caps you need to manage liquidity risk well Fantastic. I think we have successfully managed to give them the concept of small caps and of course this particular fund being spotlighted over here and to that we owe our thanks to you um, Amanish and thank you for being here. This is where we dust the popcorn off our laps uh, and we also have to tell our listeners that picture abhi baki hai <laughs> mere dost because there's other <laughs> topics to <laughs> or other topics to also discuss on the Money Wise podcast. But for now thank you so much Manish for making this so insightful and interesting for our listeners to understand. Thanks Chetal good fun being here. You're listening to Money Wise brought to you by Bandhan Mutual Fund. Check out the rest of our series for more insights on investment and personal finance. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. Bandhan Emerging Business Fund Fund is a small cap fund. An open ended equity scheme predominantly investing in small cap stocks. This product is suitable for investors who are seeking to create wealth over long term investment in equity and equity related instrument of small cap companies. The scheme risk meter is very high. Investors understand that their principal will be at very high risk. The benchmark is S&P BSE 250 small cap TRI. The benchmark risk meter is very high. Investors should consult their financial advisors if in doubt about whether the product is suitable for them.